Well, as NFL training camp rolls on, so do the injuries. Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson will be without one of his top receivers in Denver. Wide receiver Tim Patrick has suffered a torn ACL and will miss the entire season. Broncos coach Nathaniel Hackett said seeing Patrick hurt broke his heart. Here's fellow wide receiver Cortland Sutton on the injury. You know, it hurts, you know, you, you see you see a guy who, who works his butt off all off season. Um, his preparation is, is second to none. You know, he does everything he's supposed to do to be able to put himself in a position to go out and be successful. So, you know, to see um, to see him go down with an injury, you know, it's, very, uh, it's very unfortunate. Patrick signed a three-year, $34.5 million extension in November after two strong seasons in Denver. Now, after going undrafted, Patrick racked up almost 1,500 yards and 11 touchdowns over the past two years. This is a significant injury for the Broncos. Let's welcome in our former Super Bowl champ and Ryan Harris. All right, let's talk Denver. I know it's a team you know a thing or two about here and there. Now, you never <laughs> want to see a player get injured, ever. But how big of a loss is Patrick? Is, is Tim Patrick for the Broncos? I mean, this is a big one. The loss of Tim Patrick is huge. He was a team leader. He still is a team leader. You always got to speak about injured athletes in the present. And he was the second leading rusher last year. But more importantly, he's the possession receiver on this team. He plays that Anquan Bolden role, so to speak. He's going to be open on third down. He's the guy who can count on to win a route when it's second and got to have it in a two-minute drill. He has the best hands on the team. He fought through tons of injuries the past few years to still make it to the field. And he's one of the best stories in the NFL. You mentioned how he was undrafted, but he was also cut by the Ravens. And Coach Harbaugh still talks about him and wish that they had him on his team. So with the loss of Tim Patrick, coaches have to find a replacement. A lot of pressure is going to be on Jerry Judy. K.J. Hamler's coming back. They have a couple of draft picks. And coaches are also going to have to change their third down playbook and play calling because Tim Patrick was a big part of that and how they expected to be successful on third down this season. Yeah, 734 receiving yards, five touchdowns, a team high last season for the Broncos. They're going to have to figure out who's going to step up next right there. All right, so Russell Wilson without one of his top receivers, but as we know, next man up, the show must go on. How do you think Wilson is fitting in with the Broncos? Well, tremendously, on the field and off the field. We'll start with on the field. He's making timely throws, building his rapport with his receivers, and he's leading. I mean, as a veteran and somebody who's played in the NFL, even the way he does his cadence, it has so much intensity and focus. And then it goes to a touchdown pass or it goes to a breaking in route. At times, you've seen defenders yelling at each other because they didn't make a play, and he's already made, as I counted, three throws that were not open. He made throws that people won't make because it just isn't there. But he has such a vision, and he's teaching this young team who has very little playoff experience what it looks like day in and day out to win. And then there's Russell Wilson winning off the field. He stayed for an hour after practice yesterday, signing autographs. And as he was leaving, one family and their kid was waiting and just calling his name, please, just please, can we get one autograph? He called them to the field, signed, took a picture, signed the autograph, and then went back and did some more work with his team. So he's winning the fans. He's winning the, the, the trust of the players. And he's going to bring some wins to the Broncos. I love hearing stories like that. Those are, those are the special moments right there. So Wilson, a clear leader of this team already, which is great to hear. But as we all know, the leadership really starts with the coaching staff. So Nathaniel Hackett, the former OC for the Jags, the man who helped the Packers to three consecutive 13-win seasons, two appearances in that FC Championship game. You look at those, the, the success that he, he's had. How do you see him running this offense in Denver? Well, already it's attack, attack, attack. They are vertically attacking the field, horizontally attacking Mixing in run plays, the play-action game is really impressive already for Nathaniel Hackett's offense, and you're going to have to wonder. You're going to have to find out how accountable he's going to be to his team. First-time head coaches, there's going to be some growing pains, right? I saw one of his re receivers' coaches yesterday. They had a drill where receivers were holding chairs and shuffling left and right. You're like, I've never seen chairs on a football field, but I'm going to trust Nathaniel Hackett because he coaches with passion. He's got a ton of energy. And he has coaches coaching up the players. So I like what you see. And I've seen at least five times defenders completely lost because of the formation and play call that he executed. So Nathaniel Hackett's offense is elite and it attacks defenses. It's going to be fun to watch. You've never seen the chair drill? 
No? The chair on the field, Jenny. On the field, <laughs> chairs on the field. No. I don't know. I mean, there's well, something not, working I, over I, there. I'm keeping an open mind. Open with mind. All new, open with mind. all new information, keep an open mind. Make sure it works for you. You know, yeah, go forward. whatever works, whatever works. All right, how about this one? Lewis Hamilton joining the Broncos ownership group. The purchase of the Broncos led by the Walmart heir, Rob Walton, set coming up in August. Adding an F1 superstar now, another high-profile investor. What do you think of that? I mean, the Broncos have become the coolest team in yeah. the NFL. Not only does the owner immediately upon the vote on the ninth become the richest owner in the NFL, you also got Condoleezza Rice and Melody Hobson, who's married to George Lucas. And then you bring Lewis Hamilton in. Come on, this is the coolest team ever. And what I love is that the Walton Penner family is excited about Lewis Hamilton joining the team because they want his expertise and knowledge on how to win championships. Now, Lewis Hamilton also has a nice little house, condo, and veil here in Colorado, stuffed full of his trophies from F1. But imagine being the living legend, Lewis Hamilton. You're flying at 200 miles per hour on some track somewhere, and they say, hey, you want to buy part of an NFL franchise? He says, sign him up. He's buying an NFL franchise while dominating a sport mainly in Europe and the world. This is incredible. Living legend, Lewis Hamilton, living legend. It is baller. You were talking about all those trophies. He holds the Formula One record for race wins with 103. So I don't know how big that house is in Vail, but I'm wondering if it's holding all those beautiful trophies right there. All right, now before we let you go, I'm guessing you're going to change out of the suit, but any expectations or storylines that you're watching when you go to Broncos camp later today? Well, today's going to be the third day where the Broncos are in pads in a row, and that creates a chippy time. And defense won two days ago, offense won yesterday, so I expect this to be a very frothy affair. But we're camping, so we're going to be out there having fun, Jonathan Jones and I and the rest of the CBS crew. But I expect this is a, this is a day in camp. You're in your third straight day of pads. Like, something has to give. You either have to grow and you got to leave some people behind you, or you're going to have a bad practice. But I think this team's going to have a great one. And you want to see even how they come out and attack the field with the loss of Tim Patrick. That weighs on players' minds because not only do you lose the player on the field, but you don't see your buddy in the in the meeting rooms. You're not joking at the at the breakfast or lunch table. So it's an adjustment the Broncos have had to go, go through the last 24 hours. Can they come out firing today at practice, get through the pain of a third straight pad at practice, and get after each other a little bit? Might be a little fight or two. I don't know, Jenny. Camp. I'll be looking forward to it. You're camping. You, JJ, our CBS crew out there today. Now you can grab one of the chairs off the field and maybe plop it down right there on the sideline. You'll be good to go. We can't wait to chat with you later on. Thanks for everything, Ryan, as always. If you're looking for your daily fix of NFL news and analysis, you got to look no further than the Pick 6 podcast. Our guys getting you up to speed in about 30 minutes each day. Their latest pod breaking down the Deshaun Watson situation. So listen and follow along today. Do want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.